Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to revisit something which we've already done uh, a couple of times already actually, but we always get new questions and it's always worth redoing these videos and taking a look at them to see if there's any way that it could be improved, and there's always good reviews as well. So let's get straight into it. So today we're going to take a look at how to reset our motherboard CMOS or our BIOS settings. Now you're probably coming along to this video, either we've headed you this way from our Discord to say like this is something you should do if you're experiencing problems, or maybe you've built your first PC or you're swapping RAM, swapping a graphics card, changing processor. Many of those types of things may result in you needing to reset your CMOS. So the CMOS settings are basically the things in the BIOS. So you go into the BIOS, you turn on things such as XMP, Expo, maybe you've dialed in some specific settings for voltages, all those kinds of things, RAM speeds. You know the sort of things I'm talking about, even things as minimal as fan speeds and changing it from PWM to DC, etc. So if you are changing your system, changing any parts, maybe you've swapped out a processor, maybe you've swapped out your RAM, clearing your CMOS is a really helpful thing to do, especially for those of you if you're building a new PC or you're changing out parts and your system just simply will not work. It could be because of many things, like in bar settings, all that kind of stuff, you may have overindulged slightly in some of your settings and the system just will not boot. So what you want to do is to reset the CMOS. So first thing to do is to disconnect the power from your PC. So for most of you, that's just going to be as simple as unplugging it from the wall. Or if you can't reach that socket, just pull the cord out of the back of your power supply. Obviously, making sure your PC is turned off, first of all, ideally. And then what you want to do is to go to the PC power button on your case, if the motherboard is still in the case, unlike what we've got here. Just press and hold that power button down and hold it down for about 30 seconds or so. And what this is going to do is going to try and start the PC. But because we haven't got any power connected, your power supply still may have some residual power left in it, which could still be giving your CMOS some power. So therefore, when we try to reset it, it won't reset because it's still getting power from your power supply. So do that first of all. So the next thing to do is to actually locate the BIOS battery on your motherboard. So Pretty much most motherboards, mainstream ones, will have a CR2032 battery, which looks very similar to this, which is located in this particular instance, just underneath our graphics card slot. So if for some reason you actually can't find your CMOS battery, it may be hidden underneath your graphics card. So you may want to remove that to take out the battery. It isn't always entirely necessary to take out the battery, but for the sake of thoroughness, I would recommend you do it. Now the next thing to do is to find the jumpers on your motherboard or the pins, which refer to clearing the CMOS. So in this particular instance, this one is actually called Clear CMOS or CLR CMOS, which is really obvious. It says exactly what it does. And those two pins are right down here at the bottom next to our IO section. You'll get some close-ups of this as we go through it. On other motherboards, you may see it notified as other things such as JBAT or JBAT1. That is quite common for MSI motherboards. Of course, as always with any of this, if you're not entirely sure, please do head over to our Discord chat and we'll let you post some pictures and we'll try and point out on your motherboard exactly where yours is located to. And something else you're going to need is a metal device. So a screwdriver ideally is absolutely perfect for this, but a paper clip, those kinds of things. You can actually get specific little plastic jumpers which actually fit over the prongs exactly. Those used to be included on motherboards years ago, but unfortunately these days it's quite a rare thing to see. So we're going to make do with our screwdriver. So what we're going to want to do is to put the motherboard into a suitable position. I'm just going to put it down on this box. Let's move the camera in so you can get a close-up view. So here we are. There is a close-up of the motherboard and we can see all of our components laid out. So there is our BAS battery. Now the BAS battery itself is normally retained with this little clip here on the side. So I'm going to turn it around slightly so you can just about see that. So there's a little metal prong there which actually holds the battery in place. So what we want to do is to get our screwdriver and very gently just lever this piece of metal out the way and the battery should pop out. It may take a couple of attempts. There we go. So there we go. The battery is now been released from the holder and just make a note of which way it's round. Normally you can tell because it says CR2032 on the top and it's got the positive plus sign just there. So that is the battery out. So now the motherboard effectively, if the power supply is not on and not connected, and the battery is removed. At this point now, the CMOS is discharging as it will slowly. But to speed that up, you can hold a metal object over the clear CMOS, which is this one here. Again, check on your specific motherboard to see which one works for you. So those two pins there are positive and negative. 
or like a breaker. So what you want to do is just to use a screwdriver or something metal and hold it on those two pins. And I would suggest holding it on there for about 10 to 20 seconds. That should be more than adequate to discharge the CMOS if we've already discharged the capacitors and stuff from the motherboard by pressing down the power button as we did earlier. So when you're happy, you can then remove your screwdriver or your metal implement from the clear CMOS pins. Then you can go ahead and reinstall your battery, again observing the polarity, so positive on the top. And in order to put it in, put it in on this side, so away from the clasp. Don't worry if you drop it, it's fine. So if you just place it in, you'll see there are some little plastic lugs there which hold the battery in place. Then with a little bit of firm pressure, just push down on the battery and you should hear it lock into place. So there, we've effectively cleared our CMOS settings and we've reset this back to the BIOS defaults. We'll discuss that in more detail next. So for most of you at this point, that is pretty much it. You can go ahead, reassemble your system and you should find that it powers up and works or at least you'll get the bar screen and it'll say that your bar settings have been reset. Press F1 or F2 to continue, at which point I would strongly suggest checking out one of our videos to see if there's some specific settings that are needing to be changed for your particular motherboard. But this is now going to answer some of the questions that we actually get on this. So one of the most common questions we get and is one which I actually wanted to address. People are asking, Mike, if I reset the CMOS, does that reset my BIOS back to the factory defaults, including the factory installed BIOS? Now, the easy answer to that is no. The BIOS itself is in kind of two sections if you want to think about it quite literally. So you have the CMOS settings, which are stored in memory on the system, and you also have the BIOS firmware. So when you update your BIOS, as you would do with a USB stick or however you choose to do it, that will replace the firmware on the board. Now that stays in memory all the time, unless there's some kind of corruption or the board is actually faulty. The only thing that you change is the actual settings of that firmware, which is known as your CMOS settings or BIOS settings. So that is all that this will reset. So if like this particular board, this one came with BIOS version 1.21 as standard from the factory. I've since then updated it to I think version 1.4. So by resetting the CMOS settings, I haven't gone back to version 1.21. I'm still on version 1.4. It's just the actual BIOS settings themselves have been reset to the default settings for that particular BIOS. So hopefully that answers and clears up some of the questions that we've been getting. And hopefully uh, after doing this, you should find your system will post and works as it should do. But again, as I said earlier, if you're still getting problems with this, please feel free to join our Discord. It's completely free of charge. Links for that will be in the video description, so you can head on over there and uh, ask any questions you may have regarding this or anything else PC related, you're more than welcome. So I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like on the video. That'll be much appreciated. And as always, if you wanna see more content of this on a daily basis, then consider hitting the subscribe button and the chime notification, and that way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.